Hi folks, Colin here. Welcome back to the channel. It's good to see you. Today I'm going to talk about what I would do if I was going back to the start of my rock and roll guitar journey, day one. What would be the fastest thing I could do as a beginner to move my guitar playing forward? Uh, this is based on many years of experience and obviously teaching lots of people how to play guitar from scratch. So the first thing I would do is I would get myself an electric guitar, not an acoustic guitar. Get yourself an electric guitar, folks. Because uh, the great thing about electric guitars is that uh, their strings are much lighter than an acoustic guitar. So that's going to be much easier for you, for you to play. And the other thing is you can turn the volume down. Your neighbours will love you for that, I'm telling you. So you can practice away to your heart's content. And uh, you won't bo bother anyone in the process. The next thing I would do, get yourself a tuner. Day one, make sure your guitar is in tune because uh, it's going to sound so much better than if it's not in tune and that's actually much underrated amongst many beginners. So it makes them sound a lot worse than they actually are. Uh, and you know, you've got to remember you're giving yourself feedback all the time, folks. So you want to sound as good as you possibly can sound. Uh, and make sure that you're giving yourself as many chances as you can to do that. So yeah, so we're going to need to know three chords in the first instance. Now the first chord that I always recommend is the E chord. And there's loads of videos out there, you may already know that chord already. Uh, but I'm not going to go into it here, this is just a summary of video. The next chord is the A chord. And with those two chords, tunes up straight away. The third chord you need is the D chord. And once you've got those three chords you're away really. Most uh, pop songs use three or four chords but that's the basis for most rock and roll uh, E, A and D. The next thing to do is get yourself a capo. Once you've got a capo then you can really play in any key. So using those three chords you just if it doesn't suit your voice when you're singing you put the capo on and you've moved up a bit and you can carry on as before as you continue to add more chords and riffs to your repertoire. The next thing to do really is to get a few basic riffs. Now um, before I, I mention that I should talk about the pick. So generally speaking I recommend people use a, a plectrum. Now people usually ask me what kind of plectrum should I get Colin? Uh, and I say well you're going to need a, a few of them because uh, you'll go through them quite fast if you're practicing a lot and also no size fits all when it comes to plectrums. If you're doing strumming you want a lighter gauge plectrum so something around maybe a 0.45 or something like that. If you're playing lead, uh, and generally I use this most of the time, I'm using a thicker gauge plectrum, a 0.88 and it's really good. Gets me through most stuff but I do use lighter picks occasionally as well. So the next thing is to get some riffs, as I said. So um, the first one you're really going to get is the shuffle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little link up to one of my shuffle videos. But basically it's just moving from the second fret to the fourth fret on the D string. Just like that. Any kind of permutation of that. you're also playing the A string at the same time. And that's a movable riff that goes up a string. If you start on the D string open and play 2 and 4 on the G. And go back to the A string. Then the bottom open string, the E string, and then four on the A, then back to the A. So when you're at that stage, now that should take you, I would say, about a month uh, to get the basic chords and get those riffs down. Then really the next thing you should start to think about doing is, is finding other people to play with, because if you do that, then naturally you're your journey is going to move much faster because you're going to be connecting with other people. 
So that's quite important. Um, and once you've got to that stage, um, the next thing you also want to do is look at bar chords. Now these, these freak people out quite a lot. Um, no particular reason. Generally speaking, what they do is they put far too much pressure on the first finger, when really it's the back fingers that are doing most of the work. And uh, if you are getting muty, buzzy kind of noises, uh, just don't play those strings for the first bit and just get used to forming that bar chord shape. Again, this is not a bar chord video, but this is just tips, folks, as we go. And there's basically two bar chords. There's the E-shaped one and the A-shaped one. And you want to get those ones under your belt as soon as you can. And that would usually take about two months to get to that point. Now, you've really got all the chords you need to play rock and roll and rock and roll music. Um, you're going to need to add some riffs and licks to your repertoire um, if you want to do that quickly get in touch with me because uh, that's kind of what I do help people out to play rock and roll and that's really the, the last point I would make is if you are wanting to move fast in your rock and roll journey get a teacher to help you um, because uh, if you're not careful you'll start to develop all sorts of bad habits and uh, you, you'll put things in your way without realising it which you know a teacher can help you out with and make sure that you're moving forward quickly and also make sure you're learning new things all the time to make you go fast in your journey to become a good player. Okay folks that's it from me today I hope you found that interesting I'll see you next time.